Hello, everyone, and welcome to Prophecy Files Briefing. We're glad that you've joined us. I want you to share this out on your social media, help other people to understand the times that we're living in and the signs that are coming from the Word of God that let us know very clearly that we're living in the last days. I also want you to mark your calendar for the upcoming Prophecy Files Conference in September. There'll be more information coming soon, but I want you to make sure that you're saving that date for you to be able to be a part of it. But today, let's deal with the most important thing that's taking place and the uh, obvious events that took place this past weekend in the assassination attempt on President Trump. It is said that according to those that are working in it and the information that has come out, that it is within millimeters that the bullet that grazed his ear uh, of course, came within that millimeter of being able to be a headshot, a kill shot for the former president, Donald Trump. It is obviously a difference between life and death that's just a millimeter. It's interesting also, even just a few moments ago, hearing that there was a five mile an hour wind that was blowing at the time. So the combination of that five mile an hour wind and the movement of his head at that very moment is the only thing that came between life and death for him. Five is the number of grace. And I will tell you that there is no doubt that grace and mercy has been shown uh, in this particular horrible, what could have been a tragic and very uh, match lighting event even here in the United States of America. I'm glad to know that former President Trump acknowledged in his posting on Truth Social, he made the statement, it was God alone who prevented the unthinkable. Well, there is no doubt that it is God's provision and God's protection. I'd also like to draw just a couple of analogies here and to help you understand uh, what's happening in our time right now uh, and as it relates to Bible prophecy. It was President Trump that decided in his administration a few years ago to move the embassy of Israel into Jerusalem and to declare Jerusalem to be the capital city of the nation of Israel. I feel in my strong confidence, according to the word of God, those that bless Israel will be blessed and those that curse Israel or trifle with Israel will receive a curse. I truly believe that there is a link to how that uh, President Trump treated the nation of Israel when he was in the office of president that is directly connected to the protection and provision that has been over his life in recent days. There is no doubt that it plays into the entirety of what we're seeing as last day spiritual battles and spiritual warfare that is taking place. I want you to understand at the core of all that you're seeing in our land is a spiritual battle that is happening for the very soul of this nation and for the world and for your individual lives. Matthew 24, 38 and Genesis chapter number six lets us know what it would be like prior to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it declares, Jesus speaking this in Matthew 24, that it was as it would be in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Violence was the characteristic, one of many characteristics that denoted Noah's day. And Jesus said it would be like that prior to his return. According to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, and the subsequent verses there, it would be perilous times. And he goes on to list what those perilous times look like, even fearful times as the word perilous is defined. I can tell you that one of the worst signs in the societal violence that is taking place even today is the fact that some would lead others into that violence. Here's what the Bible says. A man of violence entices his neighbor and leads him in a way that is not good. That's Proverbs 16 and 29. Here's another one. If sinners entice you, do not consent. Proverbs 1 and 10. And if there is envy in the heart of an individual, the Bible says this, do not envy a man of violence and do not choose any of his ways. Proverbs 3.21. What are we saying? I'm saying to you, my friends, that violence is one of the features of the last days prior to the coming of the, of the Lord in the rapture of the church. And these few verses of scripture let us know that violence is not to be a part of the believer's life. In fact, should not be listening to those who try to incite evil or, as the scripture says, 
calling evil for good and good evil. The rhetoric that has taken place has ramped things up. There is no doubt about it. And we would call everyone to a place of repentance and to a place uh, that there could be civility and godly principles that would rise to the level that people would take note of it and follow after the Lord Jesus Christ. So how am I protected in this environment of lawlessness and violence and violent behavior and all that is taking place? Well, I would encourage you to go online. This past weekend, I was preaching the message concerning Psalm 91. You know that to be a psalm that is one for every season. There's no doubt about it. It was also the psalm that was read by the 91st Brigade going into World War II that literally protected them from harm throughout World War II. Not only that, but uh, military men and women have gone into battle and recited this psalm over and over again, as well as the fact that if you just take it at face value, it is Psalm 91 one that says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Listen to these words. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He will cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Why is this so important for us to get a hold of? You have just seen the witness of Psalm 91.1, that many people call on uh, in their hour of need. But you need to understand that very first verse, helps us to realize that this is only for those who place themselves willingly up underneath the shelter of the Most High God. What do you receive as protection in these days of violence and lawlessness when you place yourself underneath uh, the shelter of the Most High? Well, all the way down in verse number 14 and to the remaining part, the next two verses of Psalm 91, it says this. This is what God's promise is to the believer. I will rescue you. I will protect you. I will answer you. I will be to him with him in trouble, the Bible says. I will deliver him and I will honor him and satisfy him with long life and show him my salvation. My friends, there is no doubt that we need to put ourselves up underneath the shelter of the Most High and remain there, abide there, as the scripture says. Certainly, in the time that we're living, Every person that's listening to me now needs that kind of safety, security, and protection, and it's only found in God Almighty. I remind you of the words from former President Trump shortly after the assassination attempt. He made this statement, it was God alone that protected me, that kept me, he says, and prevented the unthinkable. I can assure you that God has the power to keep you and protect you in the time that we're living in. And I encourage you to call upon the Lord and encourage others to do the same, to place ourselves up underneath the shelter of the Most High God. Until we get together on Prophecy Files Briefing again, remember Jesus Christ is coming soon. Prophecy Files Briefing.